you know, we just all need to do something that fills us up and be so quit, quit being so concerned with, you know, how it looks to the outside world or how somebody perceives it or, you know, does it make me the most money? I can make a lot more money doing what I used to do. And my rate, my hourly rate was good, but this is more fulfilling. And I'm at a phase in my life where I want to be fulfilled. Welcome to the So Inspired Podcast, where we unravel the stories behind the stitches. My name is Trisha. And my name is Alex. Each week, we'll be sharing our own sewing tales and inviting special guests to join us on the show. From favorite sewing techniques to must-have products and even some hilarious sewing mishaps. We'll be covering it all. Whether you're a seasoned sewing pro, a beginner, or just curious about the world of sewing, this podcast is for you. So grab your needles, your thread, and maybe a glass of wine and plan on leaving here So, so Inspired. inspired. Today, we have special guest Courtney Govro, who is an author, public speaker, and talented quilter. You may know her from her popular TikTok account, So Excited, where she shares fun and easy sewing projects that anyone would feel confident taking on. Courtney's passion for quilting is contagious, as is her joy. In this episode, we're gonna dive into Courtney's journey as a quilter, hear why she simplified her life, and learn why she names her sewing machine. So sit back, relax, and get ready to be inspired. We are super yeah. excited to have Courtney Govro with us today. Welcome, Courtney. Oh, I'm happy to be here finally. <laughs> yeah, we did have a little bit of technical difficulty last time we tried this, but we are super happy it's working this time around. Yes. So can you go ahead and tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Sure. I'm Courtney. Um, I sew on TikTok. I post everything to Instagram and YouTube. I would definitely say those are not my main social medias, um, but I do TikTok videos. I do tutorial videos. I am really focused on beginner sewers, uh, not the advanced stuff. Um, I'm in a lot of ways a beginner myself. I started sewing a few years ago, uh, but I try to really point out the things that my mom taught me that helped me learn how to sew and helped me do things better. I love that so much. I, I I love that you also focus on beginner sewists. I saw uh, one of your TikToks just the other day of you talking about how, you know, nothing is perfect here. You know, things might be a mess. The seams might be, you know, not perfect and stuff. And that's okay because the whole point is just doing it and enjoying what you're doing. And I just love that you are, you know, that kind of friend to people to remind them that it doesn't have to be perfect. You're just, we're just having fun. This is just, yeah. you know, this is for, for me. So we hear, um, it's we a good hear, life lesson. <laughs> yes, it is. And we hear Courtney in our brains all the time. Yesterday I was sewing my pot holder and I was just having issues with my binding and I'm like, it's okay. It's going to be finished. <laughs> Let's just get started. <laughs> that's right. You know, there's a lot in the world to be upset about and that's not one of them. Yeah. Uh, you know, we went through kind of a, a rocky period of time there in my family a few years ago. And um, this is just not something to be upset about. It's just sewing. It's good mental therapy. It's good, uh, just something creative to get something out of your system. And that's why I do it. So when I can't do it, like literally sometimes I'm working on a pattern. I'm like, I have no idea what this is saying. I just walk away. And it's just fabric. I mean, it's some of these kits that I buy are like $20 or $27 or whatever. I would rather walk away, put it away. I sometimes give it to my mom. Often I give it to my mom. I'm like, hey, I got this for you, which really I didn't get it for. I just couldn't do it myself. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, there's always a solution. Mm -hmm. And actually, if you feel comfortable talking about it, um, do you want to go into a little bit about what your family went through? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. So um, the reason I started sewing really was uh, my brother got cancer in uh, 2019. It was end of the year 2019. And then he passed away in 2020. So while everybody was going through the pandemic and everything else, we were dealing with uh, losing my brother to pancreatic cancer. And it was just an awful, I don't know if you've had anybody go through that. That's just an awful cancer. Not that any of them are good. Um, and so there was just a lot of stress through that. I'd had cancer a few years prior, you know, and I made it through it. So it was really kind of hard mentally to go through that. Um, and so at the end of the summer, he passed away in August. Um, my mom and I had gone down to the lake. And actually, when we were there, she just kept talking about cancer. And I was like, we have got to find a way to not talk about this. Mm -hmm. And I said, why don't you teach me to sew? And actually, I have the quilt. I, I was looking the other day. Um, so this is the oh. quilt. Um, this, we bought these blocks at a, a uh, antique store. And um, then we bought this patterned border and the binding and the backing. 
at a quilt store, the quilted cow down there, and we put it together. And I just kind of got addicted. There's a lot of just mental health therapy that is proven, like it's researched. Um, the traumas are stored in the creative part of your brain. And when you work on things like that, it starts to release that trauma because a lot of times you can't verbalize it. That's the logical side of your brain. So you can't verbalize the trauma, but you are able to take it out of your body through creating. So it, it's just a great therapy. What a beautiful way to cope. And I'm so sorry about the loss of your brother. That's that's horrible. And I did have a family member, an uncle that also passed away from pancreatic cancer. And you are correct. That is a horrible cancer. Horrible. It's just a horrible, horrible cancer. And, you know, once you get it, if you're at a certain phase, there's no hope really mm -hmm. to, to survive. My brother was, was a, a believer, a Christian, and, you know, he was like, I'm going to win. That was kind of his joke through the whole thing, which we have kind of a dark sense of humor. And he was like, I won, you lost, I'm going first. And I'm like, Aww. dude, come on. He goes, I'm going to look down at you and I'm going to say, I won, you lost. And I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> Courtney, you're going to have us cry you know, over here, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was a really, I will tell you, you can use this or not use it. Gary was a really cool guy. Uh, we worked together for more than 20 years. We ran a company together. People used to call us two halves of one brain. Um, he did. I used to get mad at him because people thought he was my younger brother. And he's literally eight years older than me or was eight <laughs> years older than me. And he was kind of the logic square guy. And I was kind of the creative um, speaker kind of person. And so we made a really good pair. Uh, but yeah, he, he was a really cool guy. But, you know, Aww. cancer's non-discriminatory and who it picks. Very true. Alex, do you need a moment? <laughs> oh, God. Alex, I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> she, She's crying, Courtney. <laughs> oh. Oh, well, I'm so uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, you're sorry. You can't make me cry. Well, you're crying. crying. I'm crying. No. <laughs> <laughs> We're all going to be a hot mess. <laughs> oh, Welcome to my life, ladies. Hot <laughs> flashes and hot messes. <laughs> <laughs> love it it's my just, husband says that's why people walk me on thick watch me on tiktok because i'm a hot mess <laughs> <laughs> we love your hot mess <laughs> is uh, messness a word <laughs> we're gonna make it a word it is a word, it is a word. i think it what it, it is is, is that you're you're relatable mm -hmm. i think everybody all every single one of us is a hot mess mm -hmm. but a lot of us just try to conceal it and you just own it yeah. and everyone else is like Okay, I feel a little bit better because Courtney just owns her hot mess and I know I've got it and she's brave enough to, you know, and it makes it, it's relatable. It's, it makes people feel good. So yeah, yeah well, I lived a long time good. not owning it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I lived a long say, time. Uh, I said, I lived a long time not owning it. I ran a software company and I ran a, a pretty large size company uh, with my brother and, you know, you have to be on all the time. Like, my outfits that's why i was like i'm gonna put on real clothes today for this power, for this uh thing uh but my outfit used to match my powerpoint like i was wow. so on and um there were very few people that i let know i was a hot mess um and uh so i, I think that's why i want people to feel freedom in what they're doing because there's so much we try to hide and put a mask on and you don't need to because really it kind of makes other people feel bad if you're perfect. And that's why when sometimes when people comment on, I've, I've learned like 5 million ways to say thank you through TikTok because people are like, they give you feedback or uh, suggestions and things like that. And some of them are really genuine. Like I love the Blue Baker and I love Valerie and I love the Spoolist and I love Mary Quilter and Chris. They give you really good feedback um, and it's not, intended to be like wow you suck <laughs> and sometimes i get commenters that are like wow you suck and i'm like you know what this is nothing to say that about <laughs> yeah. that's when you just give so. them big air hugs and pray for them that's exactly right so i do want to touch back on um who taught you how to sew so you mentioned your mom was the one that taught you so that's pretty cool yep. very special and how you yep. learned um so do you guys get together and sew quite a bit or do you usually just send her your binding <laughs> <laughs> oh, she does all my binding. <laughs> I actually have a pile of binding for her to work on. Um, so we do get together. I don't know that we, so we haven't got together with two sewing machines until this, we went on a quilt retreat for the first time. 
which was wonderful. I kept thinking, what is the deal with a quilt retreat? And why are these people paying so much money to go sit in a room with other people and sew? <laughs> it was so much fun. Aww. It was like all these people that like the same thing. And it was funny as I did my hair one day. And one of the girls was like, wow, your hair's done. And I'm like, yeah, I do my hair. And then I realized I don't do my hair. Like TikTok's all my hair's pulled back and with that headband. I'm like, yeah, sometimes I actually don't wear a t-shirt. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was so fun. But mom and I, um, she, when I first started, she would come over. We were at a different house and we would sit in the dining room. And I would be at the sewing machine and she would sit next to me. And she'd literally look over my shoulder and she'd be like, that seems off. Mm -hmm. And she's like the sweetest, like people meet her. They're like, your mom's so sweet. I'm like, try sewing in front of her. <laughs> um, but, and then she'd rip my seams and, and she would explain to me, you know, this is the most important thing. My mom will say the most important thing is your seams. Mm -hmm. You can get around a lot of cutting errors, but your seams really got to be good. Um, that's why I love a quarter inch foot. I'm like, sweet Jesus, why didn't anybody tell me about the quarter inch foot until this last year? Um, I actually introduced my mama to it. I was like, girl, you need to learn this. Oh, so yeah, the, the right yeah, so. foot for the job always makes all of the difference. It's amazing how much, amazing. how much better in the experience is when you're using the correct presser foot. <laughs> oh my gosh. And it's so much fun. And now I know, like, I was always afraid to change my foot. Like I never changed my foot on my first sewing machine. I sewed on that thing for a year. I made like 80 quilts on it and I never changed my foot because I was afraid to. And then the next machine I got, I didn't change the foot. And it really wasn't until um, this last year, Valerie, one of the other TikTokers has said, you need a quarter inch foot. And I'm like, what is that? And I got it with Jolene and I was like, oh, now I've used a zipper foot. I've used a quarter inch seam foot. I've used a stitch in the ditch foot. I've used all sorts of feet. <laughs> <laughs> I love your stitcher ditcher. How you call it the stitcher ditcher? Stitcher ditcher. <laughs> that yes, it is one of my time. favorite feet. <laughs> I like it better than I like the walking foot. I mean, it just, yeah. it's just it's just kind of relaxing to do the stitcher ditcher thing. I mean, yeah. it's like that is nice. I love that. And like you hear edge joining or edge stitching or stitch in a ditch, but Courtney says ditcher stitcher. <laughs> Stitcher, Stitcher, something or other. It's awesome. It's, it, it. it does make me think of a boat on the water, which may be why I like it so mm. much. I like to be on the, on the boat, but you know, cause it kind of cuts through it as you're going. And I'm like, this is so relaxing and I can watch a show. I love PBS. So I'm always watching PBS and sewing. <laughs> PBS. Oh, they've got some good stuff. Celtic women. Have you ever heard of them? No, I'll have to they that are down. Irish singers and they are only featured on PBS, I believe. And I would watch their really? concerts when I was younger and they're, they're awesome. So yeah, they're... I popped through those masterpiece theater ones. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like 90 years old. Yeah. Celtic women is probably a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Never mind. I can't think of the word. <laughs> it's kicking it old school. I don't know. I don't know. It's not really old school. It's probably a little... Uh, I really can't think of the word. I'm having a total brain fart. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. It's all right. We're not talking about that anyway. Oh, do you have any questions, Alex? No, but, I'm... No, but I, I do have to say, so it's just interesting to hear about how you got into sewing and then where that has led you since then. Cause I know that you've talked about some of that journey on so creative live. And I was just uh, amazed at just where your heart is and with, with sewing. And I would love if you talked a little bit about that and where your journey has kind of led you since you started. Sure. So after my company sold, um, we went through a long process. So after Gary passed, we sold one company, but before that happened, I'd sold my software company and, um, went and worked for that company for a while. I had an amazing boss. I really enjoyed the time, but then we sold again. I mean, it was like, we sold four times in a very short period of time. And it was a lot. And, and the last one, I'm like, yeah, I just want to go on contract. So I went on contract and I taught part time. I was a teacher. I, I made up a class for a local high school called a maker's class. And it was making things and learning how to sell them. So I wanted to call it the art of the side hustle, but the teacher didn't like that name. I'm like, it's a side hustle. Um, so anyway, we, we had this fantastic experience. I realized in that experience, I, I did not want to teach high school. <laughs> that was a lot. I mean, for one hour of class, it's like 4 million hours of work. 
Um, so I love teachers. You all have my heart. So anyway, as we kind of came out of that, I knew my contract was going to be up and I normally am going about 110 miles an hour with my hair on fire. I cannot sit still. I can't, you know, not do work. Uh, so I have started, I started my PhD. I was like, this will be fun. I'll do this. And, um, one day I was, I had started watching the TikTok cause my kid had showed it to me and I thought, well, this will be fun. Maybe I will make a video on the TikTok. And I don't even remember what the first one was. I think it was because I'd bought something off of TikTok and it was awful. And I was like, <laughs> why did anybody ever buy this? And then I started making these videos and I was like, well, this will be fun. I'll share the experience of learning to sew on TikTok." And I literally went on there um, in end of October, early November of last year. And um, I made this funny, I made this video. My husband said, if you can get to 700 people, cause he never thought I could, um, I'll get you that fancy iron you want. My Alyssa, <laughs> you know, and so there is a video out there, if you find it ever, it's like me with a green screen with the Alyssa. And I'm like, if I can get to 700, I get that iron. I mean, like, literally, that was the <laughs> That's and, awesome. And um, Mary Quilter and some of the other ones picked it up. Uh, Hearts on her foot, who's one of my faves, uh, picked it up. And I literally got to a thousand within like a day. Wow. And I was like, well, that was interesting. So then I started researching the TikTok algorithm because I used to write algorithms and I'm like, well, this will be interesting. Mm -hmm. So then I started playing with it. And what's interesting about TikTok is, and I know this is a long answer, I'm sorry, but what's interesting about TikTok is it's, it's built and created, the software is built and created to create community. So mm -hmm. you are rewarded for interaction. So you're rewarded not just for watching, but for interacting with these other people. Well, I love people. And I was like, oh, this is fun. And it is amazing how those interactions really feed you and you become literal friends. Like I get up in the morning and I'm like, oh, there's Chelsea. Oh, there's, you know, all these different people. And I, I think that's what's interesting about it is I was able to create community with a group of people, which I would have never met in a million years. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm able to help people that never have sewed or used to sew or thought about sewing. And they're like, that's not too scary. I could try that. And so there's this, it's just kind of a beautiful interaction. That's awesome. I love that so much for a couple of reasons. Number one, I love taking the fear away. You have taken the fear mm. away from so many. I mean, that is so easy to see. Aww. Even people that have been sewing for a while, like myself, like you took the fear away of just doing it, you know, go ahead, just get into it and do it. So like I said, you are in the back of my mind quite often where I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm doing this <laughs> <laughs> between Alex over here being an awesome motivator and you, <laughs> I'm doing all yeah. that. No, it's wonderful. And, and then the community though, you're so right. You know, you meet all these friends and they do become your little literal friends, excuse me. But Chelsea yeah. lives pretty close to us and we got to hang out in person and she's been here filming and I've been able to go out to coffee with her. You know, it's amazing. I love it. Yeah. I'm a little jealous of that. I love Chelsea. And, um, I had to mess with my algorithm the other day because for some reason her videos didn't pop up and I was like, what in the world? So, you know, you have to kind of go back and interact with them to remind TikTok mm -hmm. that this is somebody I want to see. Um, but I agree, you know, I've loved watching Alex learn to sew and mm -hmm. kind of, <laughs> I love her, um, the way when you, when you show a new product or you're like, Hey, this is a fun product that, that perspective you have, and it's all new and it's all exciting. And, I think that's really cool and really fun. Um, yeah, I my mom, she's so funny. She got something in the mail the other day from AccuQuilt and she comes running up to me and she's like, Courtney, look at this. And I go, what? And she goes, your friend Chris is on this postcard. And I was like, my friend Chris. And she goes, Chris from, from the TikTok. And I'm like, oh yeah, Rose City, yeah, Chris. And she goes, I know he's one of your good friends. And I'm like, well, we are friends on the TikTok. I mean, <laughs> it was so funny. She thinks I'm, I know famous people, which I do. Y'all are famous. <laughs> so, um, I feel like makes we me feel a little shout out to those guys too, because it's Chris Marquini with Rose City Originals and then Chelsea yes. Swindle with She So Seems. If you are on TikTok or YouTube, they're awesome. So yeah, make yeah. sure to give them a follow too. And then obviously Courtney. Yeah, I didn't know how to. 
I was going to say, obviously, Courtney, we oh, need me. to do yours too, so people can follow you. <laughs> yeah, it's like Courtney Govero 141 or uh, so excited. <laughs> so excited. It's easier. <laughs> Um, you know, I didn't say Chris's last name because I, I wasn't sure I'd pronounce it right. We um, were pronouncing it incorrect for quite some time. And then on a live, we asked him and he's like, it's Marquini. I'm like, okay. <laughs> we'll oh <get> my. <laughs> yeah. I love his stuff because it's real original. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times in quilting, um, we take old patterns, so old locks, um, and we recreate them into something new. So something we do is probably just an old block. It's a bear claw, it's a churn dash. It's all these different old blocks, which are, I love history. So, I mean, there's like a, a huge amount of history in them and vintage quilts and things. Um, but Chris is very unique. You know, he takes the time to make a super unique pattern. And I am not like, I may not be able to recreate some of his stuff. I did buy the pattern to do coin toss and I did buy the Accu quilt uh, cutter thingy, but I just appreciate the fact that he's creative in that way. Um, I'm not creative in that way, but I, I love to look at it. I'm creative in other ways, mm -hmm. um, but that's what I get excited about. And Chelsea, you know, she's just a doll. Mm -hmm. She gets on there and she's so sweet and so friendly and she just wants you to learn to do it. Um, and she's happy. Mm -hmm. That's all we need is some happiness in our day without some coffee. So. <laughs> that and coffee and we're good to go. <laughs> Isn't that neat yes, how there's, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> there's just so many, everybody's doing like the same thing essentially, but there's so many different personalities mm -hmm. and it just makes it so fun. It makes the community a lot of fun. Agreed. And it's not, it's not competitive. That's something that's super interesting. Like coming from the business world and stuff, they are seen, you know, people that are in your same space are seen as competitors. You know, it's like, oh, that's my competitor. That's my competitor. We are not competitors on the TikTok. You know, we are friends. We are people that are encouraging. I mean, if you saw the post I did the other day, I, I don't even know how to respond to all the responses I got on. I had gotten a nasty gram and I just went ahead and shared like just a little bit of my heart because I was like, I hate that I got this nasty gram. Mm -hmm. I had so many comments and interactions and I'm like even at a loss for how do I even respond to this and say thank you for that. I mean, it mm -hmm. was it gave me kind of the encouragement to do what I needed to get done yesterday, which was make a tutorial video on table runner number 11 or whatever number I'm on right now. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it was like amazing. And, and those people who are way better than me, like Chris is a way better quilter than me and Valerie and, um, you know, Blue Baker and the Boozy Quilter and all those fun ones, they're way better quilters than me. But they got right on there and like, hey, we like what you're doing. Don't stop. Don't be, you know, so it's not competitive. It's not like I need to take her out because she hit 20,000 and I'm, you know, that's gaining or whatever. That's not the way we look at each other. We look at each other as a community of people that enjoy the same activity. And we have absolutely very little in common. Like maybe outside of quilting, we have nothing in common, um, you know, but we really enjoy each other and we appreciate the work that each other's doing. And when you're doing it like at the pace and at the scale that some of us are doing it, you start to appreciate the work that people are putting into it. You know, I know what it takes to build Chris's videos. Those are hard. I mean, mm -hmm. I spent yesterday, um, I spent probably six hours uh, working on video stuff. So mm -hmm. I video, I, I batch record is what we say. We batch record a bunch of stuff and then you have to edit it. You have to voice over, you have to do all these different things um, to make it to where it's actually presentable. Mm -hmm. It's actually why I like TikTok because there's less pressure than YouTube. Um, but I think we just kind of appreciate each other. I think that, Sorry, that's, I why, a little bit. that's why we need more people like you and like Chris and like Chelsea to be in the community that are, you know, brave enough to, to show your faces. And also, you know, somebody like you, Courtney, that comes on and says, I'm a hot mess and that's okay with me. Yeah. And you're welcome into my family. And you know, if we didn't have people like you, the community as a whole might be a completely different kind of energy, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, I know we're really grateful that you're, on there on the TikTok and doing all, all the things and welcoming people into your community. I think it's beautiful. Yeah, it is nice to have community. We we talk about that, you know, in church, we talk about community and, and we talk about connection and all these kind of things. My my son has all the fun catchphrases pour into each other and community and connection and all this stuff. And, you know, 
it what's nice about here is i like connecting with people i like people mm -hmm. i'm a people pleaser i could just i get filled up by being around people um and by listening and giving and doing those kind of things that's why i write books and things like that because it helps me touch more people and i think that TikTok's just an interesting medium it's a very interesting technology and i'm glad they didn't shut it down because mm -hmm. youtube is a very different technology youtube is us it's a very american technology it's us talking at someone that's youtube right. it's i'm going to publish this and i'm going to talk at you instagram is is a, I hope nobody takes this the wrong way, but it's very self-promotional. I mean, it's a lot of pictures, it's you, it's ah, mm -hmm. you know, TikTok is, is very casual. It's like having someone over to your house for dinner. And I love that. I mean, if they could handle my bad cooking, um, <laughs> they can come over. <laughs> I, I forget I'm cooking and I walk away. That's my problem. It's like, oh, I was cooking. Oh no. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. I love your perspective on all the different social. I never, I, I didn't really think about the different social media avenues in that way. That that's you're you're so right about all mm -hmm. of that, and I think uh, I definitely I, I want to utilize TikTok better in that way as a community space back and forth. So you, I don't know, you just randomly inspired me. So thank you. <laughs> oh, well, good. Well, I used to write behavioral analytics, so that's why. <laughs> all of your avenues of creating and what it's just astounding to me i'm like you're doing your phd you're an author you're sewing you're <laughs> like what don't you do girl um i don't cook <laughs> um, you know there was when when gary died um my brother was an incredible woodworker so my brother was an artist so my brother has a degree in art history he went into computers after college and then he ran our company and everybody always saw him as a square which he was a square i mean uh that, that was our joke of you're a square um but you know when he died it was like why are you not living why why are you why are you not living and i kind of got a new motto and it was she believed she could so she did and that's kind of the way i look at everything i'm like well i want to do that so i'm going to it's like i have a garden i'm an awful gardener but I think I want to do that. I might want to learn to can something. I don't know why. It's not like I'd open the can and use it. There's cans at the grocery store. <laughs> but, you know, it's like, I think we, we a lot of times limit ourselves to um, what we think is okay. And when I, when I ran my company, I was an expert in a niche. Like, it, I don't say that to, to be self-promotional, but I was the best in this niche. And I was sought after and I had a lot of job opportunities and a lot of things like that. And people think I'm crazy. Like I get sometimes, I know I'm saying like a lot, but uh, I get kind of, um, I've gotten some feedback from people that are like, you gave that all up to do TikTok videos. And I said, I gave that all up because it didn't fill me up. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't feel like I could love it. And I did love it for a long period of time. So I didn't feel like that was outside of, of who I was or anything like that, mm -hmm. but it wasn't anymore. And this does, and for right now, this is the thing. And, you know, my PhD has been a dream for a long time. Um, I think it's gonna get really hard. I just got my first assignment for my latest class and it's like, you know, 40 billion pages. I'm like, that's okay, we'll see how this goes. Um, but, you know, we just all need to do something that fills us up and be so, quit, quit being so concerned with, you know, how it looks to the outside world or how somebody perceives it or, you know, does it make me the most money? Um, I can make a lot more money doing what I used to do. Mm -hmm. I still get phone calls to go do that consulting work. And my rate, my hourly rate was good, <laughs> but <laughs> my hourly rate right now, it's basically free, uh, mm -hmm. but, <laughs> but this is more fulfilling. And I'm at a phase in my life where I want to be fulfilled. You know, right. I want my books. They don't sell millions of copies. I think I've sold a thousand copies of each of the two, first two fiction books. And, you know, not that many, maybe half that on the devotionals and things like that, but it fills me up. And that's what I want to do with my life is live each day in a way that I'm fulfilling what God has for me. And right now, this is what God has for me. And so I'll just keep doing it. Plus, I get to meet really cool people like y'all. And Aww. I think y'all are special. <laughs> Well, thank you. We are very blessed to have met you. Like Alex and I have been talking about how much we're enjoying this podcast because we're getting inspired, like, and people's stories are so amazing. And it's just like this listening to you is so incredibly 
amazing. I just don't, I don't even know how to put it into words. Like I'm sitting over here getting goosebumps and thinking about, yeah, just how I have to look at my life. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's, I in my book, uh, Silencing Job is one of my devotionals and it's called Walking Through the Valley. And a lot of it is about that perspective you get when you go through a valley. And I went through a pretty bad valley, even leading up to Gary dying. I lost my voice for two years um, and I, I sing and I'm music is one of my big passions. And um, I lost it for two years straight. And I really think God silenced me for a period of time so that I could hear him uh, more clearly that I was listening to myself too much. Um, and so it came back and it's finally to the point where it doesn't sound like a 14 year old boy, uh, which is wonderful. Um, but I, I think you do need to just take some minutes and just say, am I doing what is important in life? Is this really helping somebody? Um, because if it's not, I mean, that's in James, you know, it talks about count it all joy when I go through trials of every kind. Well, trials of every kind doesn't mean I'm joyful about the trial. It means that I'm, I'm joyful that I went through something so that I can help somebody. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I kind of get filled up with what I'm doing is hopefully connecting in a way that's real with people and letting them kind of drop their guard a little bit, letting them kind of relax a little bit and just enjoy it because, you know, it's just, it's just fabric. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I think we need to get on the TikToks and sew together. <laughs> oh, that would be fun. <laughs> you, I love you, those get to hear, you know, the, Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. The beautiful thing about TikTok is I edit. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that didn't work. The that one part. Actually, <laughs> no, when you have somebody join you and you're sewing together, I've done that a little bit with Chelsea and it's a good time. It's just, you're sitting there at your sewing machine and they're sitting there at theirs and you just yep. enjoy the process. So it is a fun process. <laughs> Very cool. Well, we do have a question regarding oopsies. So when you have an oopsie in sewing, I think you've already answered this, but would you seam rip or would you embellish? Um, well, it depends. Um, so like this quilt, I did a little TikTok on this quilt. The, the seams are way off on it on a lot of places. And the seams are off because I was at a quilt retreat and I was having fun and I got to know Marsha and Donna and Joan were at my table and we had such a great time. We named the baby lock Marsha after my friend Marsha at the table. Um, so I'm not, I, I did not seam rip these, even though if you look at it closely, you'll see that those yellow seams are off. Um, but it's a great memory. Like that's a memory sewed into it. So I'm not gonna change it. If it's something like, um, like if I'm teaching somebody something and I mess my seam up a lot and it's really going to throw it off, like when you're making quarter square triangles or half square triangles or whatever you're making, um, I may seam rip that just so I can show everybody, like when you sew a curve into a half square triangle, it's not going to, it's not going to work. It's not uh -huh. going to lay out right. Um, so it kind of depends. Um, I'm not much of an embellisher. Um, I would be more like a, let's just sew over it again, person. <laughs> like, let's just, just do that again oh, or I leave it because the leaving it is that memory. That, that was a great, I'm going to love that quilt forever because where I was making it and what was going on. It's awesome. Also, can you introduce us to your machines? I, I know that you name everybody. <laughs> I can't. I have Jolene out. Uh, Marsha is still on her bag from the quilt retreat, but, um, there's Jolene. I could turn her on so she can. <laughs> she says hello. Um, I love Jolene. Uh, Jolene is a, a life changing machine. I'm not going to lie. I know that sounds goofy, but she is a life changing machine. Uh, there is something spectacular about a straight stitch machine. She just, it's easy. It's easier than sewing on a standard machine. Um, she's more complicated to thread, but and she gets fussy, just like every machine, she gets fussy. And sometimes I just walk away from her. I'm like, we're not talking right now. <laughs> um, and I just leave her. I'm like, Jolene, you can't be like this. So she is just like that, but um, she's fantastic. If you want, I can go get Marsha out of the bag. Oh, it's okay. Uh, I was just mainly, I love the fact that you name your machines and, and your lamp and your oh, irons. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, Carl, where is Carl? He was back there, there's Carl. <laughs> That's Carl. And then Ethel, Ethel and Lucy. Lucy's on right now, so I won't grab her because she's <laughs> my other, my big Alyssa. Yeah, I do name things because I feel like they have personality. And Carl is funny because we actually, 
So I don't know if you saw the TikTok I did. It's been a little bit, but I went down to my parents' house in Arizona and they have um, two of these, one on either side of their bed. They've had one on either side of their bed since I was a kid uh, of these wooden people lamps. And I was like, <laughs> just follow me around. So we have Carl here and we have Mr. Poe and Mr. Poe's in another room. But, and then my parents have, this is how crazy this is. So there's six of them. Um, there's Lady Liberty and uh, Uncle Sam is at their house. <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's so quirky. And my husband hates Carl. And I'm like, I love Carl. He's just so fun. <laughs> I love Carl. Why would you hate him? I think Carl's great. Carl, Carl can be all of our friend. Yeah. <laughs> Carl is everybody's friend on the TikTok. Yeah. Lovely. He, he got randomly named one day. It was like Carl. <laughs> you need a Fred. Everybody has a Fred. <laughs> or a Frank. Yeah. Fred or a Frank. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have to be careful because, you know, I have characters in my book. And um, so then the, the the names have meaning to me. And so I got to be careful when I'm naming things. Um, there's a Lucy in, in my first book. Uh, but because that was my girl name that I never got to use. I have four boys. Oh. and She's my girl. So sweet. Oh. If you want to go ahead and let everybody know where they can follow you. And um, then we're going to ask one more question before we wrap it up. Sure. So I have a website. Mm, fancy. It's CourtneyGovero.com. Um, I am working on a new website that will be so excited, superfun.com, that will have everything organized. I'm trying to build a database for it right now. Um, you can find me on the TikTok at uh, So Excited. Just look up So Excited or Courtney Govero 141. Um, and I'm like, were there 140 other Courtney Govero's? What was that? Um, <laughs> It's like one four one, um, and Courtney J Govero is my uh, Instagram. I'm on the Facebook. I, I, my Facebook is pretty open. If you want to friend me on Facebook, it doesn't bother me. It's just Courtney Govero. A lot of Courtney Govero. Very few Courtney Govros yet. I still got one four one. I don't understand. <laughs> oh, I love that. It. Was probably not as concise as you needed that to be. <laughs> that was perfect, Courtney. You did wonderful. <laughs> but to funny. wrap it up. What is one piece of sewing advice you would like to pass on to a new sewist? Oh, no. Oh, have fun with it. Just have fun with it. Don't, don't worry about if it's not perfect. Even if it's a gift, it doesn't have to be perfect because it's homemade. Buy a quarter inch foot. <laughs> 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 I mean, life changing. I'm not lying on that one. Uh, nice thread and a quarter inch seam foot will change your life. Uh, no. I mean, it will, but I would say just have fun with it because this, this should just be the release that you've been looking for. And if it doesn't look right, maybe it's the way it's supposed to look because, you know, our life sometimes doesn't look like the way we think it should look, but maybe it's the way it was supposed to look in the first place. And just it, you, the way you put it together is better than the pattern. That was beautiful. Oh my goodness. Did you goodness. just squeak? <laughs> Got me. I almost yes. fell out of Sharon yeah. with that one. The squeak out of you. Yeah. We're going to be, excuse me, we're going to be going back through this episode, writing down all the quotes. <laughs> be like, in the courtneyisms. <laughs> like, oh, you go well. <laughs> You guys aren't old enough to remember those inspirational posters that we all had with the picture 